Hi, it's episode 9, season 4 of the Top Knots of a Family podcast. Joining me this week, my co-host, John Sneggles. Afternoon. And a special guest making his debut, host of the Owen the Spurs podcast, and also, um, if you've ever been to a Spurs Legends night, um, then you, um, you'll you be more than familiar with the voice of Mr. Richard Cracknell, aka Crackers. Hello everyone, thanks for inviting me on. Good to have you on. As with any new guest, Crackers, how did you get bitten by the Spurs bug? I was uh, about eight years old. Um, I grew up with uh, just my mum. Then she met my stepdad, who was a Spurs fan, because uh, before that, my mum, my nan and my uncle all worked at the Orient. I lived right by the ground. Uh, My nan was the tea lady at the Orient for about 25 years, all the players and officials. Uh, I grew up in an house that was just completely orient Laurie Cunningham coming round the house people like that John Chidozzi. Um so yeah it was a real sort of orient house I lived in in Leighton but then my mum met me dad he was a Spurs fan so uh, he took me over there in 76 I think it was yeah 76 uh, Tottenham Birmingham and that was it I was just hooked because everything was just sort of 10 times the size of Orient and it was like wow uh yeah so that was it I was I was hooked done and uh never been off the heroin since <laughs> <laughs> right let's start with um yesterday's match um Bournemouth I'm going to start with guess first um crack if you were there um at Wembley um yeah for me, the the highlight up until about half time was the um, the entertainment, the um, Punjabi <laughs> Spurs, because it was a pretty dull first half. <laughs> oh, they they were terrific as well at half time. <laughs> dancing to Bangra, but like Punjabi Bangra dancing. Uh, apologies for not knowing the correct term for them, but dancing to Chaz and Dave. Come on, that's you know, there's your diversity in London right there. It was superb, wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was good. That, that must have been a f- first for Spurs. But the, the first half, I tell you what. I, 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 it felt like it felt like um, a last home league match. It felt like Swansea all over again. Bournemouth were were play, playing the same colours as Swansea were on that occasion. It was nil nil. It the ball was wasn't moving around quickly. It was just slow, and I was really frustrated at that point. Um, we got the result in the end, but was it well deserved? Yeah. Do you think? Um, for the second half performance. Yes, we mixed it up a little bit. We changed shape and um, managed to put people in between those two banks of four. Because as you say, that Swansea done exactly the same thing. Soon as we was in possession, two banks of four, and we just struggled so much to to just get in amongst those. I don't know why first half we do and second half. Um, we we actually managed to do it. First half, we can't seem to do it. Second half, we do. Um, and I just wonder why we don't come out and do what we do in the second half for the first half as well. It seems mm. quite quite bizarre, really. It's almost as if it's like, all right, let's see how we go. Keep a lid on it. Don't concede. Have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a prod and a, and a test and, and, and go from there. But second half, when we do get in between those two banks of four and start knocking the ball little angles and that it looks so so much better I mean it wasn't great yesterday um, but yeah it, it is it is better but the first half was just screaming out for somebody like Ali to drop a shoulder 
and run at Bournemouth. You know, you've got you've got to respect every opponent, especially in the Premier League, because it will come back to bite you on the backside if you don't, as uh, Chelsea found out quite deliciously <laughs> yesterday. Um, um, we, it just needs somebody to have a little go. Nobody, but nobody, dropped a shoulder and made a run at a Bournemouth player. We just, as you say, we knocked it side to side and just testing and pressing and prodding. But, you know, go and have a go. And, and as soon as you do, you you will panic teams like Bournemouth. It was just, just too too predictable. Um, John, tactically, second half. Um, Bochettino appeared to made a cha- change. We went with a back, back three and Jan... Um, played as a wing back, and also I, I sensed. I don't know if you either of you picked up on this, but Son, um, at the beginning of the first half, he was playing down the middle, um, and Kane sort of dropped off. And I wonder whether Son's pace in between the lines that that also helps us open them up. Comes the second half. A little. Uh, what I'd say. What going back to what Trichard said about going past people, games like that, we need Dembele in there because that's what he does. He'll he'll get the ball and rather pass it. He just powers past people, and he'll yeah. get between lines and and does and makes those moves. For whatever reason, Winks isn't doing that or can't do it. Um, but Jan yesterday was man of the match for me. But the the from the fir- the first change from the first half to the second half, I, I think they're doing it on purpose. They've been told to do it on purpose to sell more beer at half time. <laughs> so just to calm people's nerves, get get more punters buying beer, make some more money. Um, it is it's it's a predictable pattern, isn't it? You can see it happening week in week out when we're there. We we've done it against all the poor sides, including Chelsea at Wembley this season. It's and I, I, I considering um, what we need to do. I think if as soon as we learn to break those teams down and turns teams learn that they can't come and sit back, we'll be fine because then we'll be able to push on because they'll know they'll have to come out and play. And I think yesterday may have been a bit of a turning point. Mm-hmm. You know, hoodoos or whatever. We'll, we're past that now and we've just got to keep going. More chances than any other previous home game this season. Lacks finishing, perhaps. But yeah. Um, uh, I think, although... Crackers, as you said, we weren't even second half. We weren't necessarily at our best. I still think that we had a fair few chances in the second half to really bury that game and and make it two, possibly three nil. Um, as it was, as it was, we won one nil. We've got the three points. We're third in the table, two points um, closer to United. Um, still okay, but a good five off City, um, and two further ahead of. Um, for mob from um, uh, 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 um, the other team, <laughs> the, the other team, no, uh, uh, yeah, from from South London. Um, we had a few questions from listeners um, around the game yesterday. Kent Goodrich, or comments rather, can there be a better weekend than when when we win and the arse lose, and you throw in a Chav defeat as well? It doesn't really get much better than that. <laughs> well, did. The- if we, if you can throw in a United Arab Emirates vanity project team, if we that you know if we're the Harry Kane team, that's what they are. Um, I mean, if they lose and West Ham losing as well, then it is it, it, that that is the ultimate weekend, isn't it? But uh, yeah, you, you'd take that, wouldn't you? Chelsea losing, Arsenal losing, and us us winning. It's uh, but really we, I mean, as much as I dislike both Chelsea and Arsenal. We've always got to be looking at who's above us, uh, well, ourselves primarily, and then who's above us. Um, so, you know, if Arsenal were a few points off of us, I'd have taken a Man City loss and an Arsenal win because that would have kept us, got us a bit closer to Man City, if that makes sense, mm. without sort of belittling the, the rivalry. So, uh, I mean, Pochettino touched on this last season and, and and it's something that sort of winds me up a bit I think we're head and shoulders above the mob down the road now to be honest absolutely head and shoulders above them we look a, a better team a better attitude we look like they used to when they had Vieira and Omri and Petit in their side and they look like we used to so now I don't look at them as much I'm, 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 I'm finished peering over the fence at them and this is what Pochettino said let's start looking ahead and start looking at teams like Man City like Man U and let's start even looking at dare we uh, dare I say it, teams like Madrid and teams like Bayern Munich that's where we got to be looking 
what are they doing? Where are they going? How are they playing? You know, that's that's if you start aiming your sights at those people, then you know, the world's your oyster, really. So, uh, you know, looking over looking over the fence at the poor neighbours, it's not for me anymore. We need to move on from that. I, I think where we've come from and where we are now, where there's always going to be a bit of looking over our shoulders, unfortunately. But going with the results yesterday, my under ten side this morning got a result as well. So all round great weekend for me. Um, but looking at, looking up, considering what they've spent on money, and that we're playing at a neutral venue for our home games, and we haven't had some key players this season, I'm quite impressed where we are. To be mm. fair, we're doing really really well. Uh, we've just got to keep going. Um, I think we're we're doing all right, and and we're we're possibly apart from the couple of games where we've dropped points, we're we're on track. Last season, I was looking at the table, and it was will we make up those seven points to Chelsea? This season, it's those five points already. And the way that Man City are playing, I'm thinking, can we make those five points up? Because I'm pretty sure we can match their results week in, week out now because we're playing the right way. But can we just ma- get those five points? They've they've raised the bar so far this season. And I say so far because as good as they are, it's still early days. A lot can happen. And, you know, they've got, they've got to maintain the way they're playing over, over 38 games. But that they've... They look to have raised the bar, and can we can we can we challenge that? I think I honestly think we're the only team placed in in in, in the Premier League that can that can do that. United will be there, but their negative football. Um, I don't really know that, that they'll grind out results, but I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be a season where the team that's going to win the league and the team that's going to be closest are going to. Um, you know, I, don't, I think you need to do that a little bit more than just grinding out results. I think you need to basically win shitloads of games and not drop many points because I think City have already sort of set the, 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 the benchmark. But I think we're more than capable of doing that. Um, David Phipps, question from him. Second trip to Wembley, he says, this season and third team um, I've seen set up with five across the back. Is that just the so-called weaker team setting up this way, or is everyone going to play defensive against us at Wembley? Um, I can't see Liverpool doing that against us. I can't see City. I think it's just those teams, really. I'd agree mm. with that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it's and you know I I relish going to play games against like City and Liverpool and even Dortmund that want to come and play football because I think. That allows us then to play our game. So teams that want to come and go toe to toe with us are much, much better games for mm. us and much more enjoyable to watch. Um, you know, teams like Bournemouth, you can understand why they do it. They can't go toe to toe with us. We we kill them. We'd absolutely kill them. So we're going to have to expect that a lot this season. And as you said earlier, we do miss Dembele in those types of games because he's, he's a man that can go and, and break down those two banks of four. So uh, no, when, that's why I was actually pleased that we got the uh, group that we did in the Champions League because when the, when, when the draw came out at first glance, when, oh my God, look at that. But then when you thought about it, it's like, well, this is where we want to be testing ourselves. These are teams that are going to want to come and play. So we're going to get a bit of space to play in. And you know, if we're on our game, we are good enough um, to give them a game. I'm not saying that we're going to we'll, we'll win every one of them. You know, Tuesday night's a huge ask just because of their experience and they're a great side. But at least we'll be able to go there and play. And and play our game and show what we can do. And uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather see us go and play a Madrid, a Liverpool, a Man City, somebody like that, than us playing against a Bournemouth that are just these two banks of fours and fives. It's just oh, uh, it, it, it's hurting. And I think also against some of those better teams, the, the players they they raise their game. And I know that you, sh- you should arguably, irrespective of who you play, you should put in a good performance you should be professional about those things but it's only human nature that if you come a, come across a better team you're gonna or a, a team that that you know as you say you, you'll go to toe, to toe to toe with you you're gonna raise your game you're gonna want to to perform in those games and show that what you show what you're capable of doing so it, 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 it's always i don't know a bit more tricky against the 
so-called lesser teams, particularly the ones that that, that park the bus. Um, yeah. Question on Twitter at only Spurs: Why do we play so slowly at Wembley? Do you think things might change now that we've got our first win on there? Um, I, do you remember, I, I don't know if either of you remember this, but the old Wembley, the old Wembley, they used to always say the pitch, the grass was a little bit too thick, and the way it was cut and, and whatnot. And I look at the the Wembley pitch now, both watching us play and watching England play. And I sometimes can't help thinking the ball, it just doesn't zip around the turf as quickly as it should. And I wonder if there's any anything in that, or is that just, just absolute nonsense? When it first opened, there was horrendous problems with the pitch. I remember yeah. um, they were moaning um, a lot about the pitch. And when I used to commute into London, I used to get on the train with the two, uh, the, the two groundskeepers used to be on there. They looked like the Chuckle Brothers. And they obviously <laughs> cut the grass like the Chuckle Brothers, to be fair. Um, but, uh, yes, yes, perhaps... It's it's not White Hart Lane, and it's never going to be as 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 that. Is is it bigger? We're training on bigger pitches. Um, breaking down the five at the back. Once we did that last season, the jig was up, and teams realised they couldn't sit up back against us anymore, and they had to come out and play. And I think, um, and we've just strode on from there. And I think that's going to happen again this season. Now we can start. Now we've won against Bournemouth. Teams will think twice about coming and sitting back and sticking the five man there. They defended well. But we, we were hardly inspiring through the middle, like we've said, um, and, and and out wide, apart from Jan and, and, you know, Trippier put some good crosses in. We did kind of make it quite easy for him. Mm. The, the monkeys off the back, that's the key thing with, with yesterday. Yeah. And It was against Dortmund, though. I, I don't get this. We, you know, we'd won a game. Is it just the Premier League now? Can we... I think that there'll always be questions. I think, yeah, we won against Dortmund, but then it, the next thing was, can we win in the Premier League? And when, when, we, when we weren't convincing against Swansea... That question just lingers, but it's for me. It's dead now. We, we've 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 dealt it. It's, it's never going to be. We're never going to hit the same form that we did at White Hart Lane last season. That was exceptional by um, any standards compared to even you know compared to previous seasons at White Hart Lane. But um, I think those doubts, those question marks, have now been answered, and we can just get get on with it. Really, I think that's what's yeah. frustrating. We would, if we were a White Hart Lane, these games would be causing us any problems, and they wouldn't didn't last season. But it's a win, a win to win, and it, you're right. It's important to get that under a belt. Yeah, it's um, Wembley's not conducive to uh, building that intense atmosphere either, and uh, players feed off of that when there's a good atmosphere and an expectancy and a nice close in. Uh, stands to the pitch and a, and a bit of singing. Players, they do feed off of it, you know, and and that raises the players' game and then that raises the crowd and it, it, it is difficult. We've gone from a very, very old-fashioned, traditional, small, compact stadium into this vast, cavernous, almost soulless place, you know, and it does take some time to get in used to. It does... The actual whole stadium um, is the issue rather than the pitch because let's not forget that pitch is the same size almost as Leicester's, uh, the King Power. And then we went up there last season and won, was it six? Was it six, six one, one we yeah. won? Six one, yeah. Six one. So, so a size of a pitch, uh, you know, that's, that's nonsense. If you're going somewhere and winning on the same size pitch six one, I just think it's the whole vibe of the, of the place. You know, it's like walking through a, an airport terminal, isn't it? It's, you know, it's, it, I know we got a, it was our only choice, really, but I think that's been a, a, a big issue. Is just trying to build that whole same atmosphere that you did at White Hart Lane. That's never going to happen. It's uh, you know, I mean, you may get it in some of the bigger games, a good atmosphere there. Um, but let's not kill ourselves either. But when we did play teams like Bournemouth, like Swansea, like Birmingham, whoever, um, Category C games, if you will, um, the atmosphere was never rocking at the lane for those games anyway. But there was just that little bit more intensity. So it's just the same thing, but everyone's a bit too far away from the pitch and it just doesn't feel like home, does it? But So the players are going to need a little time for, to to adjust to that as well. It's the same as anybody, you know. If you went to work tomorrow in a different office, different factory, you maybe wouldn't be on top of your game as much as you would have been in your familiar environs, you know. So, uh, but let's see. As you say, it's uh, 
uh, this so-called hoodoo that the press seem to make well that's now gone so hopefully we can kick on from there I, th- I think there's a, a, a lot to be said for that. The, me- the media making it out as well, like we're we're nervous and that we've got a problem there. If did anybody see match of the day last night? Yes, yeah, the, saw the, that. The, the, the highlights made us look like it was about sixty forty to Bournemouth that game. It, it, <laughs> uh, it was packaged up according to reinforce that we, we're nervy. Uh, uh, you know, reality. We played well yesterday. Yeah. And it, well, it's, uh, it, it's a, just yeah. a. I'm not going to use the word narrative because that fucks me right off. But it's just the, you know the way that they're, they're, they're setting us up in the in the papers. Nothing sells a newspaper like a Spurs crisis, and somebody that worked on a newspaper once told me that. That's why Spurs in crisis was always fantastic for for uh, newspaper sales. It's now fantastic for website clicks in the modern world. Spurs in crisis has always been a, a, a good seller. So it, it suits suits to have us uh, not doing not doing so, so, so great or there being something that's not quite right because it just, it, it's it's a good money spinner. So, uh, so th- there you have it. It's uh, yeah, bit, uh, it's a bit clickbaiting, but uh, you know we just go about our business and keep doing what we're doing, and uh, eventually they've got nowhere to go with that. You know, it's like uh, Harry Kane's always for sale, isn't he? It's like Deli Ali wants to go. Uh, what other team do you see in the press or on internet websites? where they can't wait to get the great players out the door. You don't hear it at Man mm. City, you don't hear it from Chelsea, uh, Arsenal to a degree. But Spurs players, you know, the, the moment somebody scores two weeks running or has a, a decent eight out of ten game, and all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're getting their sombreros on and they're <laughs> off to Spain. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. So, but as I say, Spurs crisis sells. True. It does, and to be honest, as annoying as it is listening to all the crap that, that comes out of the media, whether that's not giving us the respect that we deserve or linking our players with, with moves away or, 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 as you say, Spurs crisis, that sort of thing, if they want to go on and do that, that's fine. As long as we go go about doing our p- business and playing well, that that's all that matters um, for me and, and I think for, for all of us as fans. So they can they can sell their papers, they can have their two pennies worth um doesn't matter um question can, can i ask a quick question sure. before we do what, what have man city done to earn any kind of respect from the papers apart from being bought out and selling billions of pounds on players you know 2008 they were getting beat 8-1 by middlesbrough they were fucking nowhere they're you know <laughs> and all all they've done is uh, uh, like chelsea won the pools and now they're fawned over it uh, you know teams like tottenham who are doing it in an organic, natural way, without spending oodles of money and bringing through the youngsters. And, you know, we have become the academy of football, mm. almost. If you look at the players that have come through our youth sides and are breaking into the first team and, and have gone on to bigger and better things, you know, Tommy Carroll was outstanding yesterday. So, you know, why why, why don't they... Why has City got this more respect uh, over uh, than us, really? It, it pisses me right off, if I'm honest. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting. I'm, I'm following your lead, there, um, Richard. I'm, I'm having a bit of a rant about the papers. <laughs> no, you're absolutely spot on, and I don't know why it is. I mean, perhaps it's because um, you know, if they're falling over a lot of these these teams, then they're getting the interviews with their players and their sort of world global stars. I don't, I don't really know. It's it, it is odd. You'd think. You'd think Spurs would be heralded from the rooftops, wouldn't you? Of here's your model of how to run a football club. As I say, you know, there's no there's no oil money invo- involved. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, we haven't come in as a the fans have bought the club out in Enoch and uh, and built it from scratch. I mean, these were very rich people that bought the club, but you know, they weren't sort of crazy rich like some of them are. Um, but they haven't chucked money at it either. It has been a gradual process. We've eventually got the right man in in Pochettino. I mean, he's done more for English football than the FA has in, in well, sort of 50 years. I mean, look at the players that have come through now playing for England. It's just like, it, it's unbelievable. So if England are going to stand any chance of winning even a knockout game, let alone actually a, a, a cup, a, Euro, a Euros or a World Cup, it's, Pochettino's your man at the moment, and yet it's you know no 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 love at all really. Well, interestingly, j- just to digress, but 
from from Spurs for a minute, but just given what you've just said about Pochettino and and all the young English talent that he's brought through at Spurs, um, but even before that, Southampton, um, there was a an article in the in one of the papers. I'm not going to mention which one in one of the papers this, this morning. Um, it's, it's extracts extracts from. Um, a book about Pochettino, which um, I think will be out on the towards the end of October. I haven't got the exact date off the top of my head. Um, and in that, he's asked. I don't know the full context. So I, don't, I don't know whether it was a sort of leading question, but the headline from from the extract was Pochettino would like to manage England one day. Now, I don't for a second believe that he does. I think I, I suspect it was probably a leading question. He was asked. And he said, yeah, why not? It would be a great honour or something like that. But the fact that he's done so much for English football in terms of you know, raising players, um, homegrown players, giving them the chance um, at club level and then ultimately those players have, have then developed and gone on to play um, play for the national side, that, to me, just puts Pochettino head and shoulders above any other manager, any other coach in the country. And, and it's a great advertisement for... for Doing things the right way, not sp- spending loads of money, not you know buying success, and surely it's as a football fan, it's got to be more attractive watching and following Tottenham doing going about the way we're doing things than than say City or Chelsea, which is just it's just there's no foundations to what they're doing. They're just spending money. Players come and go, and it's unsustainable. Know. I mean, yeah. the, the case in point. Um, their, their left back's injured, so he said, "I oh, will go out and spend some money and buy another one." So they look, you know, Danny Rose is instantly linked with them, and you know, what do we do? We'll stick Davis there and improve him and make him a much better player. And when Davis wasn't playing yesterday, Jan comes in and he plays exceptionally and he can do the job. And this is it: it's either you improve what you have and get them to play in the team, or you just go and spend money on more and more players and then and cure it that way. And that's all Pep's been really, you know, if you can assemble a side of exactly the plays you want to fit in exactly the positions you want, you're never going to fail. Mm. So, uh, Joey Barton made the point on Twitter uh, this morning, I think it was. And he said, uh, you know, be under no illusions. Pep is a great manager, but let's see him manage a team on uh, Burnley's budget or something. And then, and then go from there. And, as you say, Pochettino, for me, pound for pound, is the best manager in that league and and by a long stretch as well. To finish second last season, to be doing what we're doing this season, to be the way he develops players as well, uh, they would absolutely run through brick walls for him. And he is the glue that holds the whole of Spurs together. Now, we could lose... Any player, and I include Kane in that as well, who's probably top of the list of not to lose, um, uh, um, and would survive. What, what, the man that we have to keep at that club is Pochettino. He is, yeah. in my eyes, he is the absolute real deal. He is yeah. absolutely the real deal. He's probably the best thing that's happened to, to the club in a long while. Um, and I, I, the analogy I always use is, is like a, a domino piece, and he's he's that. Domino, not that you, you, well, not 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 the piece, um, and then yeah, and then t- take him out of the equation, and then all, all the other dominoes fall down. I mean, he really is the glue that holds it all together. Um, final question on Bournemouth from a listener um, at Sam Moore eighty two: Who's going to cop the five nil wallop that we're going to serve up at Wembley soon? The first team that comes and plays football, so Liverpool. I entirely hope so. Um, Let's talk about Liverpool. I'll take the one nil against Liverpool and make it <laughs> yeah. Arsenal instead. Five yeah. nil against them would be nice, wouldn't it? Fair, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, if a team comes and plays football and gives us some space, yeah, we'll we'll be. I mean, our, as a defensive unit, we're exceptional. I, I, you know, Bournemouth, Hugo save yesterday, exceptional, um, unbelievable stop. You know, apart from that, they didn't really cause us any problems. Yeah. As a defensive unit, we're brilliant. So uh, you know, and the way that. that they Bournemouth came. It was trying to hit us on the break. You know, they, they didn't really manage that. And if you think that's the way that if Liverpool come and try and do that, they haven't got Mane, so we're going to be pretty much fine. So if anybody comes and plays football, we'll we'll, we'll have we'll have them. Talking of Liverpool, 
talking of Liverpool and well, we mentioned Real earlier. So next two games, Real Madrid away on Tuesday and then Liverpool a week today. Um, if we do some predictions on those games, if I come to you first, Crackers, uh, Madrid away, can we get something there? We can, yes, if we don't get overawed by the occasion. Um, and that's the difficult thing here. That it's, it's still an exceptionally young team. Um, and in some respects, still quite naive, un, not naive, unexperienced. Um, and even Pochettino, not that experienced with Champions League either. Um, and what you've got in Real Madrid is a bit of a wily old goat that's been there and done it for many, many, many years with great players as well. And it's very, it is, it's going to be a very, very difficult game for us to get anything from just because it's there, just because of who they are and the players and our own inexperience. If you offered me a draw now, I'd snatch snatch your hand off. Mm. And I think my heart says, let's go out there and get a draw. My head says um, that we may get beat by a goal, 2-1, 1-0. So, uh, but I don't, I don't think we'll get schooled out there, put it that way. Has anybody read any of the, the, the bits of um, actually positive journalism that have come out in the last couple of days about Levy and the club and Pochettino? Because there, there's there's a, a really good bit in the Daily Mail, and I'll I'll put a I'll put a link up to to one of the other bits, the, the book about Pochettino, and he was talking about when they went to Monaco and they and they got beat, and he said he was so furious he just came home, had pizza, had wine, called them all in early the next morning, and then he said it, but they they did the training and he sat down. And he and he ate his food, and all the players were there. And he, he said, "Right, I'm just going to sit and see who comes up and and talks to me about the game." And he said he sat there for five minutes, and Harry Kane came in, ate, put his food down, and he walked up, and then they had an hour's chat. And he said, it, "You know, he knew then that the leader that Harry Kane was, and the way he was going to approach it." And I think from going from what his words were about that, I think he's learned from last season and about how, and he won't be so naive. I th- I think we'll get something at Madrid. I really do. I've got, I've got this funny feeling that we're going to do all right out there. Okay, um, I'm, so so. I'm, 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 I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a win. It'll be a draw, but I'm going to go for a win. All right, I'm I'm going to go for a draw. Um, but the question is for both of you: um, How do you think? Well, we can, we can all ta- tackle this t- together. Um, how how do you think we'll line up against Madrid? So, Luis and goal. I'm assuming. We'll yeah. all agree on that. Um, Uria at right back, I'd imagine, ahead of trip here. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, actually. I don't know. He may, you know, Trippi has given him plenty, shown him plenty. Um, I don't know if then he played Uria against Dortmund, didn't he? So mm. I think he sort of trusts him. And Uria done well. So you may be right. I think I think it will be Uria, yeah. The interesting thing now, it gets, starts getting, because you normally say, well, the back three picks, picks itself. But, it mm-hmm. might not, given that possibly Ben Davis might not be available. Uh, I, I, it, at a post-match press conference yesterday, Pochettino, when they asked him about Ben Davis, he, he, he wasn't hopeful. And I don't know if that was just him bluffing or mind games. But Do, does um, anybody was it illness? Was he just thrown up or or what would temperature virus? Or it, it's not a, a muscle strain or anything, is it? Illness. Quotes is what, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's had a virus. Um, so okay. he, if he doesn't play, I mean, if he plays, he plays, that's fairly straightforward. If he doesn't play, well, the options are Kyle Walker Peters, but I can't see him starting Kyle Walker Peters on, on the left hand side against Madrid. Um, if he was, gonna... I can't see him putting Rose straight into the game. If no, he's been training no. all week, I can't see him going straight into so the game. So, you'd imagine he'd either play Sun as a wing back, which I really hope he doesn't, or. I, I think I think he has to go with Yan. I think he has to put Yan in there. I think that's what he'll do. I think he'll put Yan at left back, and he'll put uh, uh, Toby and Sanchez are both available, aren't they? For yep. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he'd probably go. Yeah, Sanchez, uh, Toby Alderweireld, and then put Yan at, at left back. He's going to need uh, all the experience he's got, really, isn't he? To be honest, uh, to, he plays there for Belgium there. more often than not, though, yeah. doesn't he, Yan? Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so he's going. Uh, he's going. Going with a bat four. 
we're saying, and then two sitting in front of the back four. I'm guessing Dyer and Winks. If if Dembele and Wanyama are still when out, when Wanyama's definitely out. Yeah. Um, well, Dembele's obviously being managed for big games yeah. or for certain situations, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dembele come into this. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, it, if it, if he does, that would be a you know a big boost. But, um, even he normally gets an hour, and he. he <laughs> I hate to think that he's um, going down the same path as Ledley and not being able to play so many minutes in a week and not be able to train and stuff. He's been training, so um, I'd, I'd see Dembele in there. And if he, yeah, uh, I, I can actually. Yeah, if he's fit enough, it'll be him. When he, I think he, we, we're going to need him in there, and uh, probably why he was missing yesterday, just give him that rest and. Uh, Hopefully he can do a full 90 uh, for Tuesday night then. All right, so Dembele and Dyer, Winks are guessing on the bench, and then we're looking at behind Kane, Eriksen, Son, and Sissoko, I'd imagine. If... Or, yes. Yeah, Ali's last game, isn't it? With... Yeah, last game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that make that makes sense. Although I'm not sure about Kane starting. I've been told that we're bringing Gary Doherty back in. <laughs> <laughs> Good old he's gonna, Yeah, the old Ginger Pele is coming in and uh, Kane off the bench if that, needed. I think that <laughs> is that is how that is, that is how far we've come with the club. That you know, Gary, well, he was playing what the early noughties was about 2001, 2002, yeah, which was yeah. you know not a lot, not, not a long time ago. Um, no. No, not at yeah. all. But yeah. but what a nice man. I have to caveat that with what a really lovely chap he is. Like you know, so uh, yeah. God bless the doc. He is a lovely chap. But as you say, uh, yeah, we, we've we've come a long way from them days when he started up front against Arsenal at Old Trafford in the uh, in the semi final. And but he did score that day. So you know, <laughs> give him his due. All right, so a draw. I think we're all we're all sort of going for a hedging towards a draw. John, John, you think a win, but possibly yeah. that ends in a draw. So it's okay to get the equaliser, I guess. Um, predictions. Go it was it. okay yesterday, but yeah. we would have had another go if his first touch and his ball to uh, Nkudu would have been better. And also, Nkudu probably would have got injured if he, if his pass had been a bit better as well. Is there any news? Um, Tuesday any... night, guys. If we get a win Tuesday night. Walking into work Wednesday morning, come on. Oh, you've got a dare to dream. That I mean, all that, we're all sort of saying we're ready to draw, you know. As I said, maybe we might just come up a bit short. But a win Tuesday night, oh, man alive, it's just going to be off the scale. Absolutely off the scale Wednesday morning, Tuesday night. Well, bail's <laughs> out for them, so you never know. They're in, what, they're in seventh position? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're struggling a bit. So uh, it, it's it is a big game, and we you know it, we've got it within us to do it. So yeah, dare to dream. I think. It, to but do. I think if we if we can keep Isco quiet, then we've got a chance. And Bale's obviously out injured. Um, Liverpool next Sunday. Just very quickly, um, what can we do? To, question from Ed Brad. What can we do to, to swipe? That smirk of Klopp's face will get a win. Would be would be a good start. Um, can we do it, Klopp? Yep. Klopp, so far in all the time that he's been in charge at Liverpool, um, we've never managed to get anything more than a draw against him. He always he's seems a, he's a wily little Weasley man. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. He, um, I, I, you know, he's under a bit of pressure as well because it, it, everybody thought he was the, the you know, the the new messiah and he's not he's just a very naughty boy sorry to very naughty boy <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but isn't so... it typical of this media that we've been talking about right because he's come up he's come up short he's come up just as short as Brendan Rodgers has and I don't think his record's any better to be honest than Brendan Rodgers <laughs> and one or two others but hey ho he puts a Beatles t-shirt on does does a press conference, makes himself only the second man to come out of Germany after Henning Vane that's half funny, and everybody's just eating his bullshit up left, right and centre, and he's just buying himself so much time. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a, a game of personalities now rather than substance. I mean, nobody's fawning over... Pochettino, the way that they fawn over Klopp and how wonderful he is. It's because, you know, you're not getting any laughs and minutes and 
Pochettino coming on to his press conference in a Chaz and Dave uh, T-shirt. Um, so he's just not being afforded the same respect. It's it's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. I I don't like Klopp. I, uh, I'll stop short of calling him a fraud, but he certainly ain't as great as you're being made out uh, to, to think he is, that's for sure. Brendan Rodgers has got a better record than him. Brandon, After 73 uh, yeah. games, he's won more games and uh, then Rodgers' go. team score more goals. So there you are, yeah. 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 Um, no, I, I think we can be... Again, it's the teams that come and play football. They won't sit back. They'll they'll want to play. And d- defensively and their goalkeeper are shocking. So I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I, can't, I can't see us not losing that game. Score-wise, who knows? But I can't see us not, not winning that game. I think... Yeah. I, I'm gonna go go uh, with two one. Uh, I think I think the, the, the last couple of times we played them at Anfield, we had a few play. We 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 lost there in February, and the previous season we we drew. But we had players injured. Um, I think the first time we we went up there, Jan was injured or he was just coming back from his injury. Um, and then in February we had a few injuries. Last season when we played them at home, it was very early, early on in the season, a bit like this season, we're sort of finding our feet. Um, We've got a pretty much touch wood. We've pretty much got most of our players back, particularly with, with Lamella. I know that, that they won't feature, but Lamella and Rose are now back in full time tra- training, so things are looking a lot brighter. I don't know what's going on with Wanyama, but um, most of, <laughs> most of the players are mm. fit, available. We've, we, we, you need that bit of luck, and and I think we're going we're to win that one two one. Um, in the second half of the podcast, we will be discussing. Um, all things Spurs and legend, legend, ooh, legends, knights with crackers. We'll take a few more questions from listeners, but before we do, here is Bex with this week's Spurs Ladies update. Hello, people. It's Bex. Good week for Spurs Ladies this week. Last Sunday, they played London Bees away at um, wherever it is they play, hmm, somewhere in London. Anyway, strangely enough, um, and they managed a two-one win. That's their first win in the league this season. And those two goals came within the first 23 minutes. Wendy Martin got both goals, which is always really good. And new girls, Sarah Wiltshire and Cole Jane Haynes, had a really good game, which is nice to see that they are still very much part of the team. Following that weekend game, the girls played in the Cup against Bristol City. The game was at home and held on Thursday night. This is the Women's Super League Continental Tyres Cup. Bristol City are a WSL 1 side, so to beat them will give the team a great deal of confidence. Lauren Pickett and Bianca Baptiste scored the goals. And to see them play against a WSL 1 side and do so well, quite convincingly, is really important. And I'm sure Bristol maybe didn't. In the way that the men's game do, they will not place so much reliance on the cup competitions. But still, for Spurs ladies, that's an immense result. So from their game last weekend, that leaves the middle of the table in fifth out of ten, which is not bad, on six points. Considering the leaders who are Millwall only have seven, yeah, you know, there's possibilities going on here, girls. I'm sure Karen Hills won't be playing it like that. I'm sure she'll be saying to them, you know, just focus on each game individually and not look at the longer term. So the next game is on Saturday the 28th and that game is away um, to Watford Ladies and that's at Kings Langley on the, th- at, sorry, at 1500. So following their league game, their next game is against Yeovil Town who are another WSL1 team. So it'd be good to see if Spurs take something from their league game next weekend and then they can put it into play for the following game anyway that's it for me i am on twitter at bunch of specs if you want to know anything else cheers thanks bye bye welcome back to the second half of the top Hotspur family podcast thank you bex um right um before we do a few more questions um crackers you present or host um what are known as spurs legend ni- legends nights um many people would have heard of them um some of our list- listeners perhaps once, for instance, for example, living overseas, haven't heard of them. What's the legend? Legends night. What, what what does it involve? Uh, it's normally at, like, may say a working man's club or a, a hotel uh, function suite. So for those listening overseas, um, bars with sort of big rooms, etc. Um, so you'll get one, two, three experts players come along. 
Uh, I'm on stage with them for about an hour in the first half and I speak to them all about their careers and uh, games and cups that they've won and stuff that they've done in their career. Um, They normally have a bit of a break and everybody gets a chance to have a bit of a meet and a greet with the players, get some bits signed and have some photos done with them. Then second half is normally questions from the people Uh, attending so I get them to jot those down and I put those to the players and uh, yeah they're they're just they're just they're they're great fun nights they're all very different you know uh, football players are no different to any other workplace you get some players that are very outgoing and erudite and a bit of a sort of laugh and a joke and then others are a little bit more reserved and so they all make for a very, very different nights. They're all from different eras. I mean, I work with people like Cliff Jones from the double side and Terry Dyson right up to now. Uh, some evenings with Ledley King, uh, who's been fantastic to, um, on his nights and uh, and everyone in between. Yeah, so they're, they're good, fun, relaxed nights. And, you know, you get a bit of chicken in a basket, a good bit of entertainment, and you come home with something signed and a selfie. Bargain. Chicken, in the, ch- ch- chicken in the basket. I, I don't recall there being any chicken in the basket on Friday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I was there. You, you mentioned Led- Ledley King. You, you hosted one on um, Friday, just gone, um, at Chessington, um, with the great Ledley King. Um, this was the first one I'd done. So I, I've, uh, sorry, the first one I, I'd attended. I'm... I'm, I'm I've been aware of them, and one of the reasons I haven't done any was a lot of the a lot of the ex pros um, tend to be um, who have got great stories, no doubt. I wouldn't doubt that for a minute. But f- uh, from an, an era before um, I started following Spurs, so I, I can't relate to that. It was as interesting as I would find it, and that that didn't really, therefore, have, for me, ever have that pulling power. And I was always sort of toyed with the idea: shall I go to one? Shall I not? Um, this one I was really interested in because it was Ledley King and it was somebody that um, that I grew up um, watching and I could relate to a lot of stories and and I, I went there on f- um, Friday night. I met um, the Spurs poet Davy Elder, who I've spoken to before and, and had on the show, but never met him in person. And then um, it was the the event was hosted by a guy called Darren Sheen. Um, who I should mention he's got another. Legends Night on Friday the 8th of December with Gary Mabbott at same place in, Ch- yeah. Ch- in Chessington kicks off around 7.30, 7.45 at the Rodrons Club um, there are tickets still available I believe a limited number of tickets Co- um, tickets cost about £25 and if you are interested um, in getting along to one of those events you can contact Darren um, his Twitter handle is at Chess Spur um, but yeah, it was it was really for me. It was really eye opening and just listening to if you forget, um, you know, some of the managers that, that Ledley's played under, all the way back to the man in the raincoat, Glenn Hoddle, Santini, for all the way through to Harry Redknapp. Um, and it was just yeah, really interesting listening to him speak. And but by by the way, what a top guy, top guy, really, really nice gent- gentleman. Um, and just yeah, it was it was a really good night. Ledley is, Ledley is absolute solid gold and you know he's he's done a few with the club overseas when they've been on trips and he's just started to do a few of these um, although they're club related they're not sort of club sanctioned or any club in, involvement but like all the nights that I do um, I, I like to think they always give a very good positive uh, reflection of the club um, you know there's never any talk of like what they're doing this wrong and that wrong I mean even when things are going bad I think they're always a good representation of the club uh, personally so um, but Ledley's been fantastic he's done two or three now and uh, you know he's a club ambassador so quite rightly he has to watch what he says in certain respects but He just allows out that little bit of line and, you know, gives a little bit of himself and a little sort of peek behind the curtain as to him. And then, you know, the 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 stories from his career. So it's a nice mix and match of his own personality as a person 
and as as a as a footballer, I think he's been terrific. I've really enjoyed uh, working with him so far, and uh, yeah, they they they're good fun nights to do. And the other thing um, with those nights, as well as obviously you know the the main attraction and and getting to listen to stories from from years gone by from an expert pro and and getting the opportunity to meet him and have your photo taken and and. and autographs and whatnot and as well as obviously meeting meeting other you know it's a great place to meet other like-minded fans like-minded people individuals all brought together by spurs um you've, you there is often um items which are available for auction um spurs mem- memor- memorabilia um and that was that was quite um an enjoyable part part of the evening um that process um can I ask who's your favourite person you've done one with, Richard? Oh, blimey. it's like trying to ask me my favourite child, I think, uh, my four kids. Um, it's, it's difficult to for, for ease of working with than uh, Mickey and Graham. Mickey Robert, uh, Mick, Mickey as and Graham Roberts are. Mickey Roberts, what a player <laughs> he would be. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mick, Mickey and, and Graham are fantastic because they bounce off of each other so well and you know they you just sort of ask them a question and away they go um the three captains that i've known ledley um gary mabbert and steve perriman all fantastic as well because there's a real uh gravitas with them you know there's a real statesman like um vibe to them so when they talk you listen, you know, and some uh, unbelievable stories. I mean, I've done upwards of maybe 25, 30, 40 even nights with um, with Stevie Perriman and, and Gary Mabber. And I've never, some of us, I'm still hearing new stories from them. You know, there's just so many tales uh, to be to be told. Um, so they all, they're all fantastic, mm-hmm. but just you know, in in different ways. You know, that, that, that's what I really enjoy. I never get bored doing them. I never hear the same stories, and every night is just so damn different. So they are they're, they're fantastic to do. I really couldn't pick. A, 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 a favourite person. Uh, as for a favourite night, I was luckily enough to be asked to host uh, a night that Graham Roberts put on for the 84 UEFA Cup final 30 years uh, anniversary. And there was sort of eight or nine of the 84 UEFA Cup team there. That was a great night just because of the sheer amount of people in the same room together. Um I and mean, then I was very lucky to do a night also uh, a while ago with uh, Glenn Oddle. Um, uh, th- that was, again, that was at Chessing and uh, Darren managed to get Glenn to come along and do one. He's very difficult to get um, because of his media commitments. And he was he was fantastic. He was, you know, very open, very honest, very human, you know, gave a lot of himself, a lot of his personality. So that that was that was a, a really good night. So uh, I, I I just enjoy them all. I genuinely, honestly enjoy it doing doing all of them. They're all fantastic characters. But before we move on, we had a question from Richard Healy who says, um, "How did Crackers get into hosting le- Legend Legend? I'm going to get it right tonight. Um, Legends Nights. I just I just can't, for some reason I, I can't can't get the words out. Legends <laughs> Nights. Um, and he goes and says, "Sorry, I, I didn't know the backstory. So how did it come about?" I, was, uh, I used to do the fan zone for Sky many years ago. I've, I've done about 60, 70 games uh, on the on the Sky fan zone. For those that don't know, that was where you get the two fans in the booth and give an alternative uh, commentary to the main comms. They've, uh, they've stopped it now. But, uh, yeah, so I've done quite a few of those. And uh, a friend of mine, Ben Richmond, put a night on uh, many moons ago over in uh, Palmer's Green off Muswell Hill Way and uh, he had Graham and Mickey, Ozzy Ardelis and Keith Birkinshaw coming along to it. So I was just coming along to watch, he invited me along and um, got to the night and I think uh, Graham Roberts said, have you got nobody hosting the night, like asking questions? And he said, well, no, I didn't mm-hmm. think about that. And... Uh, 
my friend Ben said to me, oh, can can you come and host this night? And I was I was actually there. And I said, well, I've never done anything like this. He said, well, you know, you do the fan zone and can talk a load of old nonsense for an hour and a half, like do it here. So I literally just got up at the front, picked a microphone up, uh, and I just asked questions that, I've, that I would want to ask personally if I was just sat with them in a pub or you know, so I just started gassing away and two, three hours passed and uh, the evening was over. So that Did was that. Did they pay you? Uh, no, I've done, I done <laughs> it for nothing. I've done that one for, for nothing, just to sort of try and help him out a little bit. Um, and I thought to myself, well, you know, that's sort of gone well and a few people have turned up. Maybe I'll try and do one near where I live and I put on a night with Graham and uh, Mickey uh, a pub in Bucker still where I live and um, you know a few few people came along again and really enjoyed and it just sort of went from there I, put, I think I put another one or two on um, and then I got chatting to uh, a chap called Mark Carter that runs the Gloucester Spurs account and uh, he said to me do you think this would work down here in Gloucester he said, I think there's, you know, a fair few Spurs fans down here. And I said, well, why not? Let's give it a go. So he put on a night and, um, you know, sold enough tickets to make it happen. And um, and away we went. And then sort of somebody else in another part of the country said, well, what about here? I think we could do maybe 100, 150 tickets. And, and that was that. So probably, what was it, about... Oh, 10 years, I suppose, eight, 10 years later, then doing nights, a few in London and um, been up to Carlisle, do a couple there, Gloucester, Chessington, Derry, Belfast, Wales, do the nights down there just outside of Cardiff. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah, it's gone really well. Worcester as well. So, um, yeah, it, it, just sort of, it just sort of went from there. So I fell, fell into it by accident, really, and... Uh, not look back since and really enjoy it. I, me- I mentioned the one, um, the Gary Mabbott one on Friday, the 8th of December. Um, aside from that, are there any other ones planned um, in the near future that you can tell us about? Any, 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 new, well, new faces or ex pros that. Yeah, there's uh, November the 10th uh, without my diary because there's a few in a row coming up. So. I'm pretty sure it's November the 10th or 17th, but I'm sure it's the 10th. Uh, There's a night in Worcester, um, and that's John Pratt, Terry Naylor, and Alan Gilzine. Um, But like you said, I mean, yeah, exactly, yeah, you know, one half of the G-men. But the the mad thing is that uh, sometimes you'll get people say, well, you know, I didn't see them play like as yourself, but... Honestly, sometimes those what may be regarded as the less stellar players, people like Terry Naylor, you know, I'm telling you, he is probably the funniest man you'll hear doing these nights because he's no airs and graces. He's got no uh, nobody to please at the club. So you'll get the truth, the whole truth and nothing but from him. And he is properly, properly hilarious as well. Absolutely hates Arsenal and properly hates them will tell you so as well he, no, he, you know, no manners with him at all on that on that front but a really really funny storyteller same as John Pratt as well so sometimes going along to those nights where it's players where you think oh really he wasn't really a star of that team often end up the, the better night so I promise you that will be a, a really really good night um, down in Worcester um then there's Ledley King in a place called Bedwars, just outside of Cardiff. That's the 17th. Um, and after that, Mickey uh, Hazen and Graham Roberts in Dartford. Um, that's um, the end of the end of November 24th. Um, and then after that is December the 8th with uh, with Gary Gary Mabber again in Chessington. Um, so that's that. Then I think it's up into March because um, Christmas we try to avoid them because people are busy doing other stuff. 
Um, so there'll probably be one or two that come in in Jan, Feb time, which are, you know, yet to be decided. But in March, Ray Clements over at Hereford, that's uh, uh, Edgar Street at Hereford Football Club. So, uh, and, and that's in March. So, uh, yeah, there's a fair few on and with a fair few different personalities. So, uh, yeah, just keep an eye on, uh, on Twitter and uh, Facebook and that, you know, the posters are always being sent out on, on those two and, uh, Come along, you know, they're not, they're not, they're always sort of invariably 25, 30 quids a ticket and they're a real good fun night. You hear some great tales. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can, I can, you know, having finally broken the duck and been to one, I can, I can con- concur with that. Um, it's, yeah, great, great night. Um, let's just very, very quickly finish off with a couple of questions. We've got a little bit of time just to go through a couple David Fornell would you be willing to put in a near reserve side to play West Ham in the Carabao Cup bearing in mind the up and coming fixtures or would you target this cup as a more likely piece of silverware oh, no, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a tricky one isn't it I think there's a lot of merit in maybe playing your Carl Walker Peters. Um, I hate saying things like that as well, like Mel Cole, but putting an S on the end of everybody's name. <laughs> playing somebody like Carl Walker Peters uh, and a few of those that sit within the fringes of the squad, I, there's there's a lot to be said for that, to giving them some game time to, to try and make their way into the team. So, I don't really. It's more. It is more of a squad game. Um, so yes, I like to see those types of players get a few games under their belts and a bit of experience. Um, but again, on the flip side, we do really need to put a trophy in the cabinet as well. We re- and and why not the League Cup? I mean, I had a fantastic day out against Chelsea when Jonathan Woodgate edited in. That's for sure. Um, so, yeah, if, if you win a cup, that's what defines you as a club. You know, no one's going to be talking a Legends night in 30 years' time about a fourth-place finish, but they will about a League Cup. And I think they I think they really help to push clubs along um, to, to, to bigger and better things. So, I don't know, early rounds, yes, it would be, you know, a bit unfortunate in some respects that we've drawn West Ham because it's such a, a, a big game to them. Um, yeah, I may, maybe try and get a balance between some, uh, you know, first team and some of those actually uh, around the squad, I think. To, to get ourselves through the game, I think if it, if he goes with a lineup or similar that he did against um, Barnsley, where he blooded in Carl Walker Peters fourth, but you know you also had players like Yan, you had Delhi starting that match, you have Son, then yeah. I think that that's that's the ideal ideal scenario. You, you've you've still yeah. got good players, good first team players um, that give us that chance to hopefully win the match and progress through to the next round as well as helping those younger players through rather than just throwing yeah. throwing those younger players in the deep end. So it, yeah, it's, no, it's exactly. got to do that. It's got to do that as well with, with all the um, games coming up. I mean, it's sandwiched yeah. between a nice couple of games for us in Liverpool uh, you know, and Man United and West Ham have got a couple of really tricky fixtures in Brighton and Crystal Palace as well. So I don't think they'll put out a full, side, uh, full strength side by any means. No, they, great. You know, yeah. they, they they can't afford to fuck up in the league anymore because they're you know they're going down the pan quicker than I could have ever ever dreamed of. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So they, they've got they this you know they've got yeah there's Friday Wednesday Saturday for them so they're not going to be able to play a full strength side in any, three of those games either and I would hazard a guess that they'll go for the league over this cup so it could be two cracking reserve sides out. No, agreed. And also, if you put a few of those squad players in that, that may get a chance in the first team due to injuries in Premier League games, then why not get them used to playing alongside a Yan or a Dembele? Uh, that, that's what we're going to be looking to do with them, is dripping them into the side. So, drip them in in those games mm-hmm. and, and give people uh, a, a bit of a chance for some experience to play alongside those players, absolutely. Okay, final question. We did have a couple more, but um, apologies. Um, just going to go with this one, which is um, a reoccur- reoccurring question on the podcast. Um, we've asked 
uh, pretty much everybody who's come on the pod this season. So, Cracker, it's over to you. Um, you're on a desert island. Um, who from the current squad do you vote as lead- leader? And if it all goes Lord of the Flies, who do you eat first? <laughs> the f- first start at part of that question again, sorry. So, you're on a desert island. Who from the current yeah. current squad do you vote as leader? Oh, a play- does he have to be a player? Yeah. <laughs> you could be creative. You could be creative. Well, if, if I can be creative, then I'm going to have uh, Pochettino because if you get ship, shipwrecked on the island that morning, I'm telling you, by the afternoon, you'll have a five five bedroom condominium built with that man's anything to do with it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'd, have, I'd, have, I'd have Pochettino as a as a leader. If he had to be a player, oh, man. Uh, Oh, it's got to be Harry Kane, and it surely leads the line. has got to yeah. lead your men, and he's leader of men. So uh, Harry Kane, who would I eat first? If it goes Lord of the Flies, yeah. Uh, uh, well, it wouldn't be Danny Rose because I think he'd taste the lemons. He seems so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, um, but then Danny Rose could probably taste a McDonald's at the moment because he looks like he might have been tucking a few of them away of late he, in training. He has put on a little it's, bit of weight. He has. Yeah. He's the Nando's boy. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. I'd have I'd have Harry Kane uh, lead, lead as the leader and I'd probably eat Pochettino because uh, I think he likes a nice glass of red wine so, so the meat would be well cured. Wagyu beef, like Wagyu beef, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, the next podcast we should be recording a week today, Sunday evening, um, because I'll get get back from 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 the Liverpool game, so it'll, it'll be late on Sunday. Um, John, thank you as ever. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Crackers, thank you for jo- joining us. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Very kind of you. And until next week, the future's bright. The future's Lily, Lily White. Good night. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that Lily White and run on to that green. What our lane has seen its pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names are up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out all the